Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Spinning Venom, aka The Venom Blog presents Carnage Week. And we are continuing our story with Carnage, even though it's been like a week later. Uh, Carnage Weeks never seem to go the way I want them to, So, uh, but we're still I'm still going to stick with this. We're going to try to wrap it up hopefully by early next week. So today we're going to talk about Carnage Family Feud. And originally it wasn't called Carnage Family Feud, it was just called Carnage. It was a five-issue miniseries by Zeb Wells, and the art was by Clayton Crane. And uh, this book is great, uh, the, the combination of this writer and artists are fantastic. They also do the next story we're going to talk about, which is Carnage USA. And I really wanted to get to these two stories in particular before we talk about Carnage Born, because one of the characters that comes up in this story that is, you know, first appears in the story comes back in the Carnage Born one shot uh, that we're going to talk about in a couple days from now. So uh, we're going to start the story off. Uh, this was awesome. This came out after the Brian Michael Bendis took over the Avengers and he wrote the story Breakout, which we talked about before on this channel, where uh, Carnage got brought into space. He was in the raft. He was one of the criminals trying to escape. And, uh, and then Sentry came in grabbed Carnage, flew him into outer space, and ripped him in half, uh, and just kind of left him out there. And I think definitely Bendis was going for a shock moment. I don't think he really thought ahead of, like, uh, like he sometimes typically does when he wants to take care of a character or you know, kill a character or remove a character. Sometimes he just does it, and he's like, whatever, you know, I'll let other writers figure it out. And thankfully, that other writer that figured this out was Zeb Wells, because I think he did a phenomenal job uh, kind of bringing back Carnage in that kind of goofy comic book way, but still kind of making it work and still making him kind of terrifying at the same time. And he builds a little mystery around it. And that's what this story is, is a little bit of a mystery at first. And then as it unravels, you find out how horrific some things are. And so uh, the story starts off, it's pretty fun. It has like a, a truck you know, like after like a bank robbery or something and they're on their, you know, way down the street. And then you have uh, Spider-Man seemingly swinging after the truck. And uh, and so what happens is that Spider-Man is, you know, like you get these close up shots of, you know, hands, you know, shooting webs and swinging. And, uh, and then what happens is it's revealed to not be Spider-Man pretty quickly. And you find out that it's Doppelganger, which is a character we haven't seen in a long time. And I think later on why this was retitled Family Feud was because it was so appropriate. Because basically what this is, is Carnage, during Maximum Carnage back in the 90s, he put himself together a little family. He had himself as the dad, uh, you know, and then he had Doppelganger as kind of like the son in a way, the adopted son. Uh, and then he had Shriek, who was kind of like his bride in a way, like the bride of Carnage. And so the three of them started to form a group of villains together, and that's what the, you know, Spider-Man had to rally all these heroes like Deathlock and Nightwatch and all these people uh, to go after them with. So this is kind of a reunion of those characters, of those villains anyway. And so Doppelganger shows up, he's going around town, swinging through stuff and, uh, and causing trouble and, you know, mayhem and everything. And meanwhile, we cut to Tony Stark, who's at like this, you know, presentation from one of his competitors. Uh, this is Hall. His name is Mr. Hall or Dr. Hall. And he is creating prosthetic limbs. And he's got this new technology that, uh, you know, you can use that kind of taps into your mind and, uh, and you can, it makes you move these prosthetic limbs easier. And he was like, you know what, forget Iron Man suits, forget all this other stuff. Uh, we want to use this to help soldiers who have lost limbs and wars to kind of rebuild their life back. And he's like, hey, Arm, what do you think about that? You know, and the Arm's like, you know, you know, reaching out and waving at everybody. And then he's like, Tony Stark's in the audience. Do you have anything to say to him? And then the Arm like gives Tony the finger. <laughs> and so Tony Stark's kind of like playing along like, oh, okay, okay, okay. He goes, but you, you know, I've checked on this company. They haven't made anything like this ever before. They've never even been near being a true competitor to us. So something must be going on. Something must be with the, up with this tech. So I want everything I can. He's like, Pepper Potts, you know, uh, you know, everything. Like, he's like, everyone working for me, I want you guys to figure out what these guys are hiding. And then meanwhile, um, you know, the doppelganger's out there. So, you know, Iron Man's like, all right, I'm going to go answer the call. I'm nearby. I'm going to leave this press conference thing anyway. And he's like, Spider-Man, I think you're swinging around the city. Are you like causing terror? And Spider-Man's like, no, because at this point he's an Avenger. So they're like one call away from each other. And he's like, uh, okay, you might want to meet me because I think you have a, you know, a doppelganger around. And then little did Spider-Man know it was the actual character doppelganger. So they show up they get involved, uh, Iron Man gets webbed up, and Spider-Man's like, alright dude, I'll, I'll try to save you, I'll try to help you out. But then Iron Man's like, hey, what is this guy, what is this thing, I don't I don't know what I'm up against, and Spider-Man's like, oh, this guy came from the days of Maximum Carnage, you weren't there, I think Captain America teamed up with us when we fought this battle, uh, but you weren't around at that time, uh, so uh, so this is, you know, let me give you the 411 basically on Doppelganger, and meanwhile, Doppelganger's after this person in the truck, and when you find out that it's not like a bank robbery, it's nothing like that, there's a woman being transported in a truck, her name is Dr. Knives, 
And when Doppelganger shows up, he keeps muttering a word to her. He's trying to enunciate a word to her. And he's like, Mothtar and Mufar, you know, and he's like, he's trying to like say something and she's kind of confused by it. Uh, but then Spider-Man and Iron Man are like, all right, well, let's, you know, let's try to put a stop to him uh, immediately. And while they're on their way after him, these two other Iron Men show up. Uh, and these two guys, like I think some of the civilians around started going crazy, started yelling at Spider-Man and Iron Man. And then these two other Iron Men show up and they're like, hey, you know, uh, you know, we got the situation under control we can handle this and Iron Man and Spider-Man are like who are these two jokers uh, and then meanwhile uh, you know one of them one of the Iron Men uh, this new Iron Man turn and they see Doppelganger and he's about to you know he's over this scientist Dr. Knives and he's you know looks like he's gonna attack her or hurt her and so uh, the Iron Man guy opens this you know repulsor blast or hand and blasts through and actually splits Doppelganger in half cuts him right in half from the waist down uh, just like Cletus Cassidy how he was ripped in half so he blows this thing right in half but unfortunately Dr. Knives is there too and her arm gets blown off as well and so spider-man's like no like you know there's a civilian there you know like you guys aren't trained what are you doing like you're you're you know you're hurting people and so uh spider-man goes and tries to help the lady as she's figuring out just as she started to understand what doppelganger was trying to say to her and then meanwhile cuts back over to shriek being transported and uh, by a secret government agency type or we think and they bring her actually they're like all right well we know you wanted a reunion that's why we, we transferred you from your cell to here uh you're going to be here for a while at this laboratory and we want you to try to communicate with this and they show her the carnage symbiote uh so yeah pretty pretty you know crazy stuff nice way to pull everyone back together uh, and then basically what happens over the course of the next few issues is that we get a, a you know, a, a precursor, we get a retelling basically of Carnage being ripped in half in space and they're trying to explain to Shriek how it, you know, got back here. So once it got, you know, ripped, once the symbiote and Car you know, Cletus Cassidy inside of the symbiote were ripped in half and left in space, the top half kind of, uh, you know, went dormant and managed to come back into the Earth's atmosphere without, you know, burning up, I guess, too much and survive the fall. Uh, but they have no word on Cletus Cassidy. For, according to them, Cletus Cassidy is dead and he's not around. And it's just, like you know, the, essentially the top half of the symbiote, the bottom half maybe withered and died in space. We don't know. Uh, but they got the top half of the symbiote, and which can still, you know, replicate new legs and, and, and grow and become whole again in a way. Uh, but uh, but still, that's that was like their explanation, and they say that Cletus Cassidy dies. And then meanwhile, Spider-Man goes and talks to Doctor Knives. She has a new prosthetic arm, you know, courtesy of Hall Enterprises. Uh, you know, Tony Stark's competitor and this guy who's apparently behind these new Iron Men and these new prosthetic limbs, as they start to find out. And she's you know holding up her arm, and she's like, "Look, Spider-Man, you're not to blame for this. You know, stop blaming yourself." And he's like, "Yeah, but I'm I'm there to protect innocent people. I didn't mean for this to happen." She's like, "Look, I'm gonna have a good life. I got one of these arms." And Spider-Man's like, yeah, but I don't know what's up with these arms. And so she's like, all right, well, if you know, she, she starts getting irritated with Spider-Man. She's like, look, I don't want you anywhere near this. I, I have something I got to do. Uh, I have secrets of my own, and I need you to get away from me. And so meanwhile, Tony took a sample of, uh, of some of this, uh, you know, this tech that these new guys were using, these new Iron Men, and he's studying it. He starts to notice something familiar because remember Tony Stark has fought Venom before. We haven't got to the episode yet. We're going to do that very soon. Uh, but Tony Stark has fought Venom before twice, actually, in the vault and then once in his own book uh, when he was like, you know, stuck in like a wheelchair. Um, and he was like piloting the armor to fight him. So he kind of knows how these things work. And he's like, you know, this is very familiar to me. Um, and he's like, you should come look at it. And so Spider Man shows up and they realize that this, you know, this tech or, you know, these, these, uh, like, uh, I guess veins that go through these, uh, you know, prosthetic limbs that, you know, connect to you and wire to your brain, um, they are actually pieces of the carnage symbiote. And so, uh, so meanwhile, it cuts over to, you know, Spider-Man's like, oh my God, this is not good. They cut back to Dr. Knives and she's riding in a limo and she's, you know, being brought back to work and they're like, how's the new arm? And it's like, it's fine. And it's like any side effects. And she goes, not really. And then as she's looking at them, they all look dead. And so basically what's happening is her mind is starting to be infected by Cletus Cassidy's memories uh, because they were transferred from his symbiote, right? So we knew that from before where when Spider-Man got rid of the black suit and went to Eddie Brock, it, Eddie Brock instantly knew that Peter Parker was Spider-Man because memories transfer. Uh, so Carnage, you know, now this lady is starting to see uh, Cletus Cassidy's life and she's blurring it with her own memories and she's like oh when I was a kid I had a dog and I, I think I killed it or a cat or maybe it was my grandma that I pushed down the stairs and all these things are things that happened to Cletus Cassidy so it's uh, it's really neat so Spider-Man's like okay we got to get to Dr. Knives she might have something wrong with her we got to figure out what's going on and when they show up they find five Iron Men 
uh, all these guys tricked out with this new armor, but all of them that are using the prosthetic limbs, uh, you know, to uh, to rewire them. And so, uh, so yeah, so now they have a big fight on their hands. And while Peter and Tony are dealing with that, we have Dr. Knives herself that went down into the laboratory, went further down, and she starts killing scientists left and right. Uh, the symbiote is now starting to take over her mind. It's, you know, spreading up to her, you know, all over her, and uh, and it's bringing the arm to life, and it's in you know, new horrifying ways. And she's actually going through and killing all of her former co-workers and all these scientists, and it's leading her to the pod where uh, Cletus Cassidy is. Well, not Cletus Cassidy, but the suit, the rest of the suit. And so it's like, break me out, break me out. And she's like, I can't, I, I want to fight it. And it won't let her. Uh, and so you saw when Ben Riley, when we talked about Sp Spider Carnage, he had a really tough time fighting this thing. And he's, you know, superhuman strength and, and you know, you know, strong mind and everything. She's having a tough time. She's fighting it a little bit, but unfortunately it wins and it caused her to break through the glass and release the carnage symbiote and then she becomes carnage so for like a whole issue spider-man has to you know, spider-man and iron man have to team up to fight carnage again but now as this lady dr knives and again her memories are blurring together she's starting to see you know her past life but in you know cletus's eyes in a way or merging her memories of cletus's she's having trouble you know with the transformation and the rebonding and so uh it's just not going well for her and as spider-man and iron man are fighting these other people they realize okay guys bigger threat carnage is loose and uh and spider-man realizes it's you know merged with dr knives and he's like feels even more responsible you know he's like i can't know this can't happen she's a good person and she was just trying to do something and and uh and you know i, I we got to protect her tony and then of course as they make their move she actually grows wings again you know not the first time when uh you know donny cates and them in their book they were you know giving venom wings we saw that with venom rune uh venom versus rune uh you know the eddie brock did that before and we also saw eddie brock do that with um nova in his book so in this one again knives she creates like these giant like butterfly or dragonfly wings and she flies off uh, to get away and uh and while that's all happening doppelganger still the top half of them has come to life it was put brought down into like a morgue and they were going to study it and you know at hall enterprises and, and maybe try to find something they can use off of it to enhance you know their current situation with like having trouble with the prosthetic limbs and stuff they're like ah maybe there's something in this spider-man or you know creature dna that can help us like bond that better and give people the strength to handle, you know, the transformation or the bonding of, of, of our, you know, tech that we're using uh, with the Carnage symbiote. And, uh, and then he, you know, it wakes up and it's like, no, I know what I'm here for. And that's what Dr. Knives heard him saying in the beginning where he was trying to mutter a word. He was actually trying to say mother and his mother who he claimed, you know, he believes is his mother is Shriek because he remembers the family they put together back during Maximum Carnage and all the horrible things they all did together. So it's actually looking for its mom. So once it finds out that Shriek is in the building, it decides to go rescue her and help her out. And so the two of them now go on a killing spree and they start killing the rest of the scientists and the rest of Hall Enterprises that uh, they couldn't get to before. Um, you know, that while, while she was like sedated and stuff and weakened, but now, you know, she's got full you know use of her powers and she has doppelganger, hang, you know, holding on to her. And he's like, mother, you know, he finally says the word mother. And she goes, yes, baby, I'm here. And we're going to go find your dad, <laughs> basically. Um, and then Iron Man bursts in, you know, he's coming in to like, you know, fight these creatures. He's tracking, you know, Carnage itself. And uh, what he finds out is there's a separate facility where the Carnage suit was taking Dr. Knives and it leads her right to the person that they all thought was dead, which is Cletus Cassidy. And I think a lot of people, even myself, when I was reading this at first, I was like, no, I don't care how many issues it takes, whether it's three or four issues or all five, but they're going to bring Cletus Cassidy back. They got to, because that's the thing that makes Carnage so unique is that he's attached to a serial killer. Uh, that's what makes him so different from everyone else. So that's what happens. She, you know, is just a tool, a vessel that the suit is using and it's bringing her to Cletus Cassidy. And so once it, you know, brings him there or brings her there, it's, you know, Cassidy's like, oh, hello, uh, doctor, you know, and, and like, I see you got a present for me. And the suit is already like, you know, pulling away from her and going back onto Cletus. So we have Carnage created, bam, right like that, right at the, the top of issue four, uh, Cletus Cassidy is back. And we saw Cletus in that moment with like robotic legs. They basically gave him the prosthetics to recreate his legs. So he is still just, he's just a top half of Cletus. Uh, so his legs and the symbiotes that were attached to those either burned up in the atmosphere or left out in space or they're dead or gone or whatever. And so the top half of them lived and the suit apparently cocooned around him 
And as they were crashing back down to Earth, uh, they saved Cletus Cassidy, they preserved him, um, you know, through the, you know, the re return to the Earth's atmosphere. And so the suit got damaged, but not Cletus. So Cletus, besides, the, you know, being cut in half, essentially, when he landed, they were able to save his life. And, uh, and <laughs> I mean, this guy is just hard to kill, I guess. And we'll talk about that more in the uh, Sp uh, the Carnage Born book when we, take, when we get to that one, the one shot that Donny Cates really did, that, re you know, did recently because he did a really good job of showing the many deaths of Cletus Cassidy and how this guy is just a natural survivor in a, in a very scary way. Almost like Jason Voorhees. He's like the monster that won't die. Um, so that's, this is kind of that first, you know, intro to that is that, all right, he got thrown, ripped in half in space by one of those powerful, you know, creations in Marvel uh and then got thrown back down to earth and now he's you know alive again and now he's carnage again because he's rebonded with his suit uh so he's just already tearing up everything he's already getting right to the killing and then when the five other iron men show up he wipes them all out really quickly and then uses their armor because they're all using his tech and parts of his symbiote um in their you know you know bio suits and stuff and in their prosthetic limbs that he's able to tap into it and he pulls them all together and creates this giant like iron man carnage hybrid monster thing uh and it just starts tearing the city apart and while this is happening uh dr knives she is found, you know, like she wakes up in the in the lab that where she was, where she found Cletus, and that's where Shriek is with Doppelganger, and they show up at, at Hall Industries, and they see her, and they're like, uh, you know, they go up to kill her. They're like, you know what, you caused all this. You're part of the problem here. And Doppelganger is like, oh, I remember, you know, like he he doesn't talk, but he's like, mother, you know, like he's like he remembers going and asking her like about mother, and so Doctor Knives like, look, you know, uh, please keep me out of this, and Shriek grabs her puts her against the wall and is like no i'm gonna end this i don't want you any you know anywhere near us uh, i don't want you ruining our family and then she looks at the prosthetic arm that she has and she goes you know just because you have that doesn't mean he loves you more and, and dr knives is like what are you talking about and she goes your arm and she's like yeah it's a prosthetic arm it has some of his symbiote in it but it's gone now it bonded with him and she's like no look at it and then she looks down and the, there's a symbiote still growing out of the arm and uh, Shriek reveals, no, that's a baby. That's a baby symbiote. Uh, you know, Carnage must have had its offspring, and it chose you to be the mother. And she's like, but that doesn't mean he loves me less. And then she's like, okay, crazy lady. Uh, so Dr. Knives is, you know, like, okay, so now I have a symbiote child growing in my you know fake arm my artificial arm and uh and so so yeah the hits just keep coming for this poor lady unfortunately and then meanwhile you know iron man and spider-man are fighting this giant carnage robot thing and uh and at this moment you know dr knives like i don't want this i don't want this thing attached to me she sees this piece of broken glass in this window and she's like you know what i'm removing the arm and she jumps over and shoves her shoulder into the glass and grinds it in to cut the fake arm off i mean how freaking gross and intense uh and she just wants the arm gone and once it's off shriek takes it and uh and is like well if you're not going to accept this responsibility then i will and so shriek shows up at the end of uh, this issue they have dr knives with her one arm they're holding her hostage and she shows up to back up carnage in his giant iron suit bonded suit that he put together um and she has the arm growing out of her shoulder and off half her face so it looks like she's gonna you know be the host she's like hey i'm the mother i'm gonna you know nurse this baby and show it how to be psychotic and so the final battle begins iron man and spider-man have to deal with all this mess going on uh iron man is doing his best he's you know gearing up his armor it's really cool actually to see iron man fight symbiotes because uh, he's got a lot of tech that can handle them uh, but something like carnage is totally different than when he fought venom and then now that carnage has bonded with these other suits it has its own tech that it can use so it's it's kind of a fun and interesting battle actually uh but while this is happening you know, uh, you know, we have Dr. Knives being held up by uh, Shriek, and Shriek's like, you know, giving this whole speech about how she's got, they're going to win, they're going to take over, and everyone should just bow down to them. And then meanwhile, the symbiote still remembers Dr. Knives and that she was chosen, you know, kind of to be the, the mother or to birth her. So it decides to leave Shriek and go back to Dr. Knives. And so as, you know, Iron Man and the Spider-Man battle with Carnage intensifies, she actually becomes a new, you know, symbiote creature. Uh, she absorbs the suit and it goes around, kind of connects with her biokinetics as well, uses some of the uh, tech from the prosthetic arm and wraps around her as a symbiote slash hybrid of the suits that the Iron Man people wore and it turns purple and she becomes a character named Scorn. 
And again, there's reasons I wanted to talk about these stories before we get to Carnage Born because they kind of pay some of this off in that Carnage Born one shot. I got to give Donny Crate, uh, Donny Cates credit for that because uh, I, it was cool that he pulled from these stories. I think he even put a reference to Zeb Wells as one of the street names in Venom Number no. Nine, which we'll talk about next week sometime. So, uh, so yeah, Donny Cates definitely, you know, paying a, you know a lot more attention than I thought he was uh, to some of the continuity and some of the stories that happened uh, because sometimes I feel like he's retconning things and then other times he gets things really really right and this is one of those things that he got really right and he was mentioning kind of a nod to the story over the course of a couple books which was really cool of him um so yeah this looks this whole battle was great scorn is now in charge she kicks the crap out of doppelganger and then she grabs shriek and uses shriek's you know screaming powers aims it right at carnage and uses it to tear carnage apart so now the carnage melts away the suits that it you know bonded all those like five armored guys that it pulled together to make a big you know creature out of uh, she uses shriek's powers to like wipe it out and so carnage falls to the ground weakened uh, all by himself you know cletus cassidy and the suit's still kind of peeling off him but all the other suits and everything fall dead and uh, and so uh, at this moment, that's when Spider-Man goes over and just starts hammering the crap out of it, trying to beat it, trying to, you know, get expose it, trying to get, you know, to Cletus Cassidy because he thinks he's still inside. And once he, you know, cracks open all the suits and everything, he sees the last of the, the symbiotes slink away and Carnage has escaped. And as the story wraps up, we have Scorn bringing Shriek over and Doppelganger and she's like, you know, ties them up. She's like, here you go. Um, you know, arrest them, do whatever you got to do, make sure they're far away from each other because together they're dangerous. And then, uh, you know, take me into, I'm a symbiote and, I, you know, I don't want to turn out like them and I want this thing to be tested and looked at and I, and I don't trust Hall Industries. So if you guys know anyone, S.H.I.E.L.D. or something that can help me out, like, please do your best. So Tony's like, yeah, we got some connections. We'll try to help you out uh, and we'll keep Shriek on, you know, like, and bed rest or something because she's like you know definitely tapped out from using her powers to such an extent uh but we'll keep an eye on her she'll be detained uh doppelganger will lock up somewhere and then yes we will work on helping you out uh, the best we can and then meanwhile out in like the middle america uh like i said carnage got away so the story ends with uh, him and he actually got doppelganger out doppelganger managed to slink away too and so you know cletus is sitting there on a chair with like his little pet doppelganger and he's like scratching him on the head and he's like it's okay buddy it's okay you know he's like uh we're free and we're just gonna spend some time to heal and then we're gonna bring you know real terror to the world he's like and we're gonna start right at the heart of america he's like i got a plan and we're gonna execute it very soon and that is gonna be a story we'll talk about in the next episode called carnage usa and that'll pick up some of the threads left over from this and it'll be the last of the setup for the threads that we'll talk about and pay off in the carnage born one shot uh, so thank you guys very much for being so patient with me waiting for these videos i will have more of these very very soon um, but now i gotta go reread carnage usa so i'm up to date on it and i get all the you know as many details as i can write but if there's anything i missed here please let me know down below and if you have a favorite moment from this comic that you've read uh please if you haven't check out carnage family feud it's awesome but if you have read it i know a lot of you guys have because you've been asking me all week about it and when i'm going to cover it so i'm glad i finally got it here let me know down below and we'll continue our conversation down there thanks for watching my show as always like share subscribe all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the future peace